What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm interviewing one of the students in my program, Jeremy, who we took from 1500 a month to over 3000 a month in just a few months. So we're gonna talk over the exact process and we're gonna lay out the strategy, how to find serious artists, how we're selling packages for $400 and doing that multiple times a week. So really take a lot of gems from this video and let's hop right into it. And before we hop into the video, if you want to know the exact four offers that I make to sell beats anywhere from 250 to $1,000, simply DM me the word offer on Instagram at Kobe Sample Source, and I'll send you a free course right over. All right, Jeremy, how are, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good, how about yourself? Doing good, doing good, staying busy, but that's that's uh, that's life, right? So. Um, and for, for our viewers, cause I know, um, you know, they're, they're going to be quick to spot that you're like from Australia, but where are you, where are you living at right now, man? Yeah. So yeah, from Australia. Um, but yeah, living in Sweden at the moment. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. So, and, um, and I guess we'll probably just kind of dive into where, where you're at right now, just so people mm -hmm. know, like, you know, what, what you're doing right now, as far as like sales coming in and then we can dive into the other details and like give more input on the process. But like, uh, yeah. so how many, how many deals are you closing per week right now? And what price are you charging for? Yeah. So at the moment it's kind of like averaging, um, about two sales a week and then they're at 400 USD each. So yeah, it's around average 800 USD a week. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. And so, um, in, before you you joined my program, I guess like talk a little bit about where where you were at as far as like uh, selling beats, what you were trying, and, and and what kind of struggles we were going through right there. Yeah. Um, so before, honestly, it was super inconsistent and all over the place, and like, yeah, I don't know, man. I just feel like sometimes you know you get really excited and optimistic, and then the next week or two you might not. It just felt like I was just kind of running around all over the place trying to do. Spotify or mixing and mastering beats, you know, trying to trying to do lots of different jobs and it just wasn't really sustainable and didn't really make much sense. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, and, uh, it, cause I definitely, you know, when, when we looked over like what we were trying and stuff, like I definitely gave some yeah. input on like changing some things around. I know it was like uh, kind of a big shift, but, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, as far as like, as far as what you had tried so far to, before before you joined the program like what all had you tried outside of um like youtube and that type of thing yeah so just tried dming artists um soundcloud as well reaching out to artists on soundcloud yeah trying to do beatstars beatstars promo ran google ads on on youtube and yeah tried to do a youtube type beat channel so i tried i tried a few things um but yeah since i joined like your course and what you're doing it's like straight away i knew there was something like good and tangible and i could kind of see the merit in it straight away so it's been yeah super good yeah yeah because gotcha, gotcha. yeah, i i think that's always important to do like before you start just jumping right to sending dms it's like youtube could work e stars promo could work so it's like try everything but like as i mean it's not a last resort like it's very dependable but um you won't really know how valuable this is or how it could work for you unless you've already tried a lot of things yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, I feel like I had tried lots of different things and tried to get like different revenue streams going, like, as I said, like through Spotify, like through royalties saying, yeah, doing mix and mastering and beats and exclusives, this and that. And it's like, yeah, none of them are very consistent. A lot of them, I definitely didn't feel like I um, was probably pricing myself as much as what I could be. And then also like some of the times it'd be pretty frustrating as well, right? Like, Doing like signing up to some of the jobs and then just like, just kind of the yeah. Some of it was not very fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because we want to enjoy you know working uh, with artists, you know, and it's like because because uh, you're doing this full time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like because because if we're doing it like part time, just trying to figure things out, cool. But like if we're doing it full time, we decided to like this is going to be our living. It's like want to you want to enjoy okay. it at the same time, right? <laughs> So. absolutely yeah and that's the thing like I, I really have been doing this like i've been making more beats again and kind of been like having fun creating as well just like making different sounds again and 
yeah it's more personal as well like when i am working with artists it's more personal so it's like i like that because uh, you know when i did youtube and stuff it's like you know they'll get plays maybe they'll get the odd sale but like pretty rarely to be honest and then you usually just come up with like a name you know and you got a sale but it's like you don't know who that person was you don't know who the people are listening and you might never speak to them ever again even if you get the email and i email them something like hey thanks for for buying the beat let me know what you make to it you don't hear back from half of them so it's just like it wasn't really what i wanted to do anyway you know what i mean so it's like yeah i want to make good music and and be able to monetize it but i'd also prefer to not just be a name as well like yeah so that's a good point that's definitely a great point like um you know it, it's a little bit impersonal so if you're trying to yeah. drive sales or improve it, it's, it's kind of difficult because you're kind of taking what the algorithm gives you um and and yeah look, like we can we can probably or did you have like anything to add to that i guess before we dive into like more of the process no, I think, I think that's sweet. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Cause we can kind of dive into for someone who's listening, who is like, okay, you're making good money off of beats, the process, yeah. is tricky, but I don't know what the process is start to finish. Could you walk them through? Like, how, how do you find artists? Um, you know, how do you message them? How do you get them onto a zoom call and, and actually sell a package for $400? Yeah. So pretty much just go on Spotify um and just find like an artist who i know or i've worked with before who like makes music in that certain lane that i mainly make which is mainly for me like guitar beats and then i just yeah um like spotify has a function where you can see like related artists or related music and then i just go through those related artists click on their page go find the instagram page um send them a dm about a song or two i listen to and just basically give them a compliment basically get a conversation going just get the ball rolling and then yeah look to look to build some form of relationship with them and then yeah try and get them on a zoom call essentially like i'll i usually first call them um and then get them on a zoom call after that yeah gotcha gotcha yeah so so that's the process so basically like find artists on spotify dm them see if they have an ig and then dm them on ig and then yeah. before you go straight into like sales mode get onto a, a call and start previewing your beats and, and promoting yourself we have a, a quick call with, with the artist and uh develop rapport trust and, and see if it you know we can even offer them something that they want right so uh i i think that that's important to note because like a lot of a lot of people are doing phone calls to try and sell beats but they're just selling on the call and we're doing the opposite of that. so it's, it's counterintuitive but that's like a really important part of the process yeah, no, I can see that. And I mean, I I definitely had phone calls with some artists in the past as well. And some artists, like, they might have just wanted to even just talk and, and like, you know, or like, hey, bro, I've got to show you this song I made. Like, sometimes it was just, like, kind of all over the place. So it's nice to kind of um to have this. And, and yeah, like, the Zoom call is really good. Like, honestly, all the people I've done it with, even if they haven't bought, like, it's always, like, a good experience. So it's, like, because I've made the habit of, like, asking, like, like well, you know, like, what do you think of this? And like 95% of the time they're telling me like, this is really great. And like the other 5% isn't even bad. It's just like, yeah, this is like the best experience I've had with the producer. Like, yeah, this was good. Like I like looking through beats this way. Um, so yeah, it's just, yeah, I think it's just more, more real and more genuine. And like, for me being overseas, it's like, I can't really just go to the studio with, with heaps of artists to meet them there. So it's like, this is the best option I've got. And I think that's a big part of it too. And, and maybe for the artists as well, right. That they, maybe they're not in the studio like that. So it's like, this is kind of a, a more personal way to get together and, and try and um, make some music. Yeah. With a real person. hundred percent, hundred percent. And so like, cause, cause it makes more money typically, but that's important mm -hmm. to know too, is that you gotta, you gotta care about the artist. So that's like a disclaimer. If you, just want to make money it's like yeah you can do youtube have a faceless brand and make money but like if you would, would you recommend like jumping into this if you didn't like artists or you didn't like actually you know conversing with them but didn't like artists you said yeah oh uh, well i mean i don't know i mean some artists are better to work with than others but like just to be just to be like super super transparent but like honestly they've all been good like all the zoom calls i've had have been good and like Usually it's just kind of talking, getting to know them a bit. They tell me a little bit about their music, their story, usually 
some some people share some pretty personal stuff and then like yeah just go through beats and and basically look to see if i have something they like i mean the whole format of doing it is pretty likable to be honest like yeah i haven't had i can't say i've walked away from a zoom call and been like damn that was like i didn't like that sort of thing like it's always a good time so that's um that's been the biggest pro of it where it definitely has been you know like Maybe in the past, artists have tried calling me out of the blue or doing whatever, and it's like, damn, I don't want to talk to that dude right now. But no, this is like, no, it's it's good. Yeah, all positives. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and like, because I think a lot of people think myself, for myself, like I'm extroverted and I like uh, talking to people, but I'm actually very introverted. And I, I think like that is something that, um, you know, is a skill that you have to build. It's something that you have to, uh, put yourself out there and, and kind of gain before before you start seeing results. So like, don't expect to be perfect right away, right? Um, yeah. And like, because because you're you're closing a lot of your sales too. And I guess yeah. if you were gonna give one tip to somebody who's gonna get onto a Zoom call and try to get a sale, like, what do you think is the number one thing you're doing right now that's getting artists to buy? Um, honestly, the thing is just I. I genuinely try and like listen like that's a skill I try and just have in life anyway is to really listen to what people say and then um try and really understand where they're coming from so it's like I used to do a job working with people like disabilities and that sort of thing where that was pretty much my job was to help them out help them try and get a job or like do all the rest of them, just help them out in life so it's like I definitely um tried to get better at that as a skill of just like actually listening to what people want and then yeah, then, like, I think that, honestly, is just, like, listening. So I probably um, probably spend a fair bit of time, like, trying to get where they're coming from and just have a normal conversation with them about it. So, yeah, I try and be an open book and just try and be, like, um, yeah, just try and be transparent and, and just, yeah, share my share my thoughts and listen to what they have to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah so active listening. I mean, and so it's, like, because it's not like you just started doing that yesterday. It's, like, you had previous experience in the job that, you got to listen and you actually care about people and so like i think that's important when it comes to sales it's like the more self-focused we are the less we're actually listening to what the artist actually wants and needs yeah yeah that would make sense for sure and i mean yeah just from like what i've heard and things i think like you know some producers would that like we just go and spam out or something and they're not really listening it's like buy this thing buy this thing buy this thing and it's like that maybe that does work on the odd occasion, but I feel like most people get super frustrated with that person and just like want nothing to do with them. Um, Cause I don't like being sold to that way myself. So it's like, I don't know. I just try and um, yeah, try and try and get to know them a bit and see what music they're looking to make. And then just yeah, try and see if I have something for them. And, and sure. yeah. 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 Most definitely. So in, in like when you join the program, um, you know, you, you saw pretty quick results. So, like, did you enjoy the experience overall or what, were you like, this is the worst thing in the world or, like, was it somewhere in between? <laughs> yeah, no, the course has been overwhelmingly all positive, eh? Like, I mean, um, yeah, I, I guess I had some hesitancies before I signed up. Like, damn, will this be a good idea? Will this be a, you know, will this be, like, a good or bad thing? But since I joined, it's all been super positive, eh? Like, it's all been positive. So, I've... um. Yeah, learned heaps of stuff from like talking to you and and just yeah, you sharing me lots of knowledge and and things and just like showing me a like a good format to to sell beats through and then um just kind of yeah, just adding heaps of knowledge together and then trying to put it into action. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and, and kind of like speaking of action too. So, it, would you say this was hard? Was it or was this easy? Um. I would say that, like, if people are making half decent beats, they could easily do this. Like, because I I could spend more time, like, I could definitely spend more time actively trying to get more sales than than what I have. So I think that like most people could easily do this. To be honest, like, if they if they have half decent beats and they're like they're willing to put themselves out there like that, I think they could easily do it. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So so product is is key, and then then put some effort into it. So. Yeah, so so would you would you recommend this to somebody else um, to actually pursue this kind of program for themselves? Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. It's just like 
if they are a producer and they want to go part-time or full-time or like they just want to make some money from it or whatever it is, but then maybe they're not having much success with it or they just want to like step it up 100%. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Got you. So, and, and like, cause, cause when you join the program, like you, you put in the work, you're very like attentive to, uh, you know, like show up to the one-on-ones and, and, uh, ask as many questions as possible. So I think that that curiosity and um, like being dedicated to it was what it got you results so quickly. So it's like, if you're a producer out there who's looking to see results and you have those same qualities, I think you can see similar results. Yeah. Yep, so, but uh, but yeah, man, yeah, thanks for joining on. Like super happy to, to be able to, to coach you and, and uh, see you succeed in the program. And thanks for sharing the, the gems with the audience. I know they got a lot from it. So. Uh, but yeah, did you have any last thoughts before we hop off? No, that's so good, man. I appreciate your time as well. And yeah, thanks for all the help you've been giving me. It's been super helpful. Yeah. Hope you guys got a lot of knowledge from the video and got some of the exact tips and tricks that we use in the program to scale Jeremy to over 3,000 a month. And if you want one-on-one help like Jeremy did and you want to work with me to help you to get to 3,000 a month in the next 16 weeks, then what I want you to do is DM me the word full-time on Instagram at Kobe Sample Source. I can reach out with some more details and see if or how I can help you and if you're a good fit for the program. And if you got nothing else from the video and you just want something for free, then DM me the word offer on Instagram at Kobe Sample Source and I'll send you a free course right over. I'll see you guys in the next video.